Have you ever seen a painting when you put the painting on semi-wet paintings? So this is semi-wet, this is. So if I was to now, um, say I did a, a sky wet like this. Say a sky wet like that. Like this. Just say, say something dark. Say I did something dark like this. What I'm going to suggest here is when you're doing something like that, you've got to be very careful when the painting semi dries like this. Because when you touch, when you load your brush up too much with water, as you're progressing through your painting, your watercolour, and if you touch with a colour or something, something like that or like that, you'll get this like a tiger wave. All the water will unload out your brush and it will cause a tiger wave. Have you ever read that? Now when this is semi-dry, I'll show you what I mean. I've just touched the trees up a little bit like that, just to show you what happens. This might be a little too dry at the moment. So this one here we'll work on, this little corner. Um, if I was to load my brush up with two, the, when you're nearly finishing a painting, in other words, don't load your brush up with water too much. Keep it less water and less water. The more you get into the dangers of the drying process, use less water in your brush. Because if you don't, what happens is you're, you'll put some more colour on like that. And you'll think, oh, I'll go back to that sky again, like that. And you'll do that on the sky and you'll get this tiger wave. If you can see it when it's semi-dry. And you'll get this tiger wave like that going through the sky. Can you see that? And as, as I leave it, it goes more of a tiger wave. See that? And I'll touch it here, look. I think I'm putting some colour on, and you'll see a tiger wave appearing. Because I've got too much water in my brush. And it, see that circle there? That circle there? To a good painting, you don't want that tiger wave there. And if it ever does happen like that, what you can do to try and save the painting is you put too much water in your brush and it's running like this and you, you ruined a good sky, what you might have had. So what you can do here is get the tissue, never ever paint without tissues and dab it all like that. Dab all the wet off it like that. Like that. So it stops it from further uh, going into a tiger wave, as I call it. So you empty your brush on your tissue, like this. You empty the brush with the tissue as you're painting through the painting, so it don't get too wet. And then you can, I'll show you another trick, you can create something again, like this. Create something again like that. And to use them lights coming through there, another little trick I'll show you. To use them lights coming through there while it's all wet. I should have done it while this is wet. But you can get your tissue like that and carefully drag it like that. A quick drag like that. And it creates a light coming through the trees. So then again, you can create light with the tissue coming through trees. And it don't matter how you do your sky or your trees, you don't want to load your brush up with too much water. The more you progress through the painting, the less water you put in your brush to avoid those tiger waves. So that could end up being a tree, so I'm going to scratch a few in like that with the back of the brush. And as that dries, and we've got a few lights coming through, I'm working sideways here, so I can't see what I'm doing properly. Overlap that colour to make it distanceified, so you've got that further away in the distance. But keep that water down. See, it's not running now. I'm creating a distance of from that tone to this tone, like that. And 
when I've done even that, I can go and do a few lights because my brush is not so wet this time and it's not going to cause a tiger wave. I can add some colour in there, but providing I keep my brush semi-dry. So it's not causing too much water to leave the brush and cause that tiger wave in the tree. Like that. I've caused myself a little bit of a distance between those two colours. So I'm getting closer to me. As I get closer to me, I create the colours more dominantly. Like that. And all them scratches and scrapes I've just put in will show up when it's drying. Like that. And it creates a bush effect. But don't load your brush up with water too much. Because if you do, you're going to be a disappointed person at the end of it because it's going to all start going, you know, in that. Uh, would you like me to show you again? I'll spoil the painting. It don't matter. It's not a painting, really. So I'm working sideways like this. So I'll load my brush up again in a little bit. Too much water, and I'll show you what happens again. I'll empty this out, and this is what happens. If I touch that tree there with too much water in it, you see the light bursting out and it's going to cause a tiger wave. It can be an advantage for the bottom parts of the trees, incidentally, like that. But if it's a sky or clouds, I've touched that and that, as I leave it, it'll slowly cause a tiger wave and run into the painting and cause a dark line, around, a dark rim around the edge. So all these little tips and tricks don't forget one thing, as you're painting through the painting, empty your brush like that with water. And then put your colour on, just touch the brush like that, and then you can dominate your painting. You're in charge of the watercolour, you've got to know all these tips and tricks to be in charge. If you're going to be frightened of not doing anything, or I'm frightened of doing that, if there's no gain, then there's no tricks, there's no... Venture. No venture, no gain. So you've got to not be frightened. Don't forget, it's only a bit of paper. We can always chuck it in the bin and do another one. It's only a, a venture. But you start slowly getting to know all the little things that count in watercolours. So they're, they're the most important. Scratching and scraping. Careful with your sky, with your scratching and scraping. Scrape only on your, your trees. Don't load your brush up too much with water as you're progressing through the painting as it's slowly drying or you'll cause tiger waves. They're just a couple of tips and tricks ladies and gentlemen and next time I'll have more tips and tricks for you. What causes mould, what causes all foxing in the painting and we'll go through it scientifically to get a good painting from you and then we'll slowly go through all sorts of things. So look next week and you'll see another tip and trick and this is from Stephen Mann. Thank you very much.